This is the season I'm most excited for, Sansa is coming into her own and standing up for herself. This season is about Sansa taking charge and being a leader, Turner said, rather than just like a pawn in someone else's game. This is a big season for her, she's really going to thrive this season. Okay, so this is what Sophie Turner continues to go on and on about in every interview. And it's about time, isn't it? I've expressed in a few of my videos how excited I am to see Sansa this season, and how confident I am that she will finally grow a backbone and be a badass. But what exactly is she going to be doing? The only thing I've heard people talk about is, well, she will go around the north looking for her brothers and she will go from house to house to reunite the Stark loyalists, to create an army to fight the Boltons and take over Winterfell again. And to be honest, I've been on this same train of thought too, if you watch my Sansa predictions video. I mean, it sort of fits what she was saying, right? Sansa is not a pawn in someone else's game, she's standing up for herself, big season for her and all that. But doesn't it sound a bit too… predictable? A bit, dare I say, boring? Well, guess what? There's a more exciting option that also fits what she has been saying and more. Hello everybody, hope you're having a great day. Here's Val with another video to keep your boredom at bay. This video contains spoilers for A Feast for Crows. You guys know AirTag, right? Name Bucha. <laughs> No, I know, I know, it's not AirTag. I had to ask him. It's AirTag. Well, for those of you who don't know, he's the artist behind all of these. Lots of people share his art everywhere, even Game of Thrones actors. And lots of YouTubers use his art in their videos, including myself, which is how I ended up becoming good friends with him. But why is he relevant to this video? Well, he's pretty much the whole reason for this video. His Game of Thrones art for the past few months has been all about his own personal season 6 predictions. And recently he thought of a prediction for Sansa that he hadn't heard anywhere. He came to me when he was working on it and asked me if I wanted to make a video about it. I loved his predictions, so I said yes. My only job was to do the research and find the evidence that would back it up. His prediction basically says that Sansa will not stay in the north for the entire season. She will go south, to the Riverlands, and she will be part of a plot from A Feast for Crows that we know for a fact is going to happen in Season 6. Spoiler warning for A Feast for Crows. This plot involves Jaime negotiating with the Blackfish to break the siege at Riverrun, and at the same time meeting up with Brienne. You thinking what I'm thinking? Are you ready for the big reveal? Yes, the prediction is that Sansa will go to the Riverlands, taking on the role of Lady Stoneheart. Okay, I can sense your desire to just go to the comments and start typing away about all the rumors you've heard. But trust me, I've heard them too, and I've read a lot about it. The rumors of a Lady Stoneheart spotted filming and commanding an army were never confirmed to be true or fake. But if they were true, they didn't specify any actress, so it could have been played by Sophie, since Michelle Farley has said that she's not coming back. Although, someone did see her in Belfast. Not filming, just driving by in a van, but I'ma leave that discussion for another time. And yes, a lot of us had thought that Sansa would be the one to replace Lady Stoneheart ever since she became Dark Sansa. But Ertach had a very interesting way to portray it. The Proud Lord's Dead. This is Ertach's depiction of his prediction. Now, before I show you all the evidence that supports this, let me explain what we can see here real quick. This is pretty much a second Red Wedding being held at Riverrun. This is Sansa marrying Walder Frey. And of course, halfway through the ceremony, the Freys begin to get butchered, bringing everything full circle. And although it would be really cool to see it happen exactly as shown here, this is not meant to be taken literally. It's meant in a more symbolic way. It is art, after all. Sansa may not kill Walder Frey herself or marry him, but Ertach is predicting that she will be involved in getting her revenge against the Freys, just as Lady Stoneheart did. Who else can we see in this picture? Well, starting from left to right we have Bronn beheading Black Walder, then the Blackfish slicing the throat of another Frey, on this side we have Brienne cutting this guy's head open, and this guy back here is Angai, the archer who just shot this guy through the head. This here is Edmure killing lame Lothar, and this is Thoros of Myr, choking ill in pain actually. <laughs> this was Calvin's idea, a friend of Ertaches who helped him with his prediction. Grey Wind's pelt on the floor was also his idea. I guess the phrase thought it would be appropriate to bring it as a decoration gift. Oh, and this is just a random Lannister soldier. Okay, now let me give you an unbiased analysis and show you both the pros and cons of this prediction. Evidence number one. Confirmation that the Lady Stoneheart plotline from the books is happening in season six. 
First of all, we have these pictures from the set where they were filming the River Run Siege. You can see the Tully sigil here, and you can also see the Lannister and Frey tents just outside. We even have this picture from inside of the River Run Castle with more Tully sigils. And then we have a bunch of actors confirmed to be appearing in Season 6 who are part of that plotline. There's Clive Russell coming back as the Blackfish Brendan Tully, and Tobias Menzies as Edmure Tully. We also know about casting calls for a group of outlaws that included Lachlan or Lashlan? Wait, 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 let me look it up. Lachlan. Lachlan? <laughs> Alright then. He's the leader of the outlaw band. We have Ricky Champ confirmed to be playing a guy called Flynn who's a member of an outlaw band as well. Same one, most likely. Japheth is another outlaw. God, these names. And there's also a character called Bauer, whose filming schedule overlaps with those of the Outlaws, so it's possible that he's part of it too. This could be the same Brotherhood Without Banners outlaw band that was previously led by Lord Beric Dondarrion. Especially when you hear the rumors that Thoros of Mir is coming back as well. <laughs> yeah. As you may remember, in the books, the band members changed a bit after Beric Dondarrion died, bringing Lady Stoneheart back to life. Thoros was still with them, but he didn't like the new purpose that Lady Stoneheart gave the Brotherhood. She didn't care about justice, like Beric did, she only cared about revenge. But casting news are telling us that Lachlan is the new leader, so this helps support the prediction a bit more, because maybe this is the show's version of these events, and they're purposely leaving room for someone else to take on the role of the revenge-thirsty Lady Stoneheart. I've gotta mention that it is also possible for at least part of this role to be given to Arya through Nymeria, because guess what? A pack of wolves was also spotted near the set for River Run. Oh yeah, get hyped. And let's not forget Ian McShane. He will be interacting with his outlaw band as well, and he's pretty much told us that he'll be playing the Elder Brother, or Septum Maribald, or a combination of the two. And on top of that, he also said he would help bring back a character who we all thought was dead, so... Yeah, I would say it's safe to get hyped for the Hound's return as well. But let's not get too off track here. One way or the other, there will be a lot going on around this area. Hmm, who else do we need for this plotline? The phrase? Well, you already saw their tents in the pictures, so of course they are coming back. But the confirmed character that we find the most interesting is Lord Walder Frey. Yep, he is back, hopefully only to be killed off. Also, an actor who played one of his many sons has hinted at coming back as well. None other than Black Walder. Mm-hmm. The guy who heartlessly finished off the first Red Wedding by slicing Catelyn's throat. And last but not least, there was a casting call that seemed to match Merit Frey more than anyone else. He's another son of Lord Walder Frey. In the books, he helped plan the Red Wedding, and he's also the father of Fat Walda. Now we're only missing Jamie and Brienne. Do we have confirmation that they will be part of this? Yes, we do. News from the set from very reliable sources have confirmed that both of them were filming scenes in River Run. Also, Jamie will be with Bronn, and Brienne will be with Podrick, so it'll be interesting to see those two meet again. News from the set also talk about what was filmed there, and it goes along the lines of Jamie having a heated discussion with the Blackfish, just like in the books, and then Brienne also having a heated argument with Jamie, followed by her offering her services to the Tullys right after. There will be a funny exchange between Bronn and Pot too. It sounds like there will be a lot more action in this scene though. An assault was filmed where the Blackfish attacks first by shooting flaming arrows at the Freys and the Lannisters, so it may turn into a full-on battle. Okay, I think I've made my point here. The Lady Stoneheart plot is happening. With or without Lady Stoneheart. Evidence number two. Brienne in the Riverlands. Let's talk about Brienne for a second now. We know that she never gives up. Ever. And she has only one objective right now, to find and protect Sansa at all costs. That's her oath, and nothing would make Brienne put aside an oath. This is a good time to mention an interview with Alfie Allen that came out recently where he's spilled so much information it makes you think that he's just trolling us. But one of the many things he said was that after they jump, Theon does try to sacrifice himself and lead the Bolton officers away, but then he adds, in fact, he doesn't lead them away because they see Sansa anyway, and then Gwendolyn Christie turns up as Brienne of Tarth and smashes everyone to shit. So, if all of this is true, then it's confirmed that Brienne saved Sansa. Knowing now that Brienne goes to the Riverlands at some point, we can assume that it would only be because either Sansa sent her there, or she's going with Sansa. 
I highly doubt that Brienne would willingly leave Sansa alone unless she's really really safe wherever she is. We also know that Brienne offers her services to the Tullys, so why would she be doing this if not for Sansa? Catelyn is dead, and helping the Tullys would only delay a search for Arya if that's what she's doing in the Riverlands. Sansa does seem to be the main person Brienne will revolve around this season. So, we could say that Brienne going to Riverrun makes a pretty strong connection between Riverrun and Sansa. Evidence number 3. Actress sightings. Sansa wasn't spotted filming at Riverrun with Jamie and Brienne. She may have been shooting indoor shots only, but how did she get in if the castle was under siege? In the books, the Blackfish had a way to escape the castle without being noticed, but I don't think Sansa would know the way and it involved a lot of swimming so it's probably not an easy task. She could just be waiting outside until things have been resolved though. And we have some clues to support that she might be doing just that. Reliable sources have said that Sophie Turner was spotted filming scenes near the set of Riverrun, in an area that is usually meant for forest scenes. And of course my first thought was that there were probably more scenes in the Wolfswood after they escaped Winterfell. But when she was spotted here, there was no mention of Alfie Allen or Gwendolyn Christie or Daniel Portman filming with her. So maybe these were different scenes. In the context of this prediction, this tells me that she may be filming King's Road scenes. Maybe this is when she runs into the Brotherhood without banners, or Nymeria's pack, or both. Evidence number 4. Quotes from Gwendoline, Sophie, and Dan Weiss. Gwendoline Christie. So many characters for so long had their isolated storylines, and as a fan of this show as well, I've been wanting and dreaming. I wonder what it would be like to see this person interact with this other person, and that's what starts to unfold. I got the scripts for season 6 and I thought the story was so fantastic. It's really exciting to see Brienne burst forth again. Okay, let's break this apart. Whichever characters she's talking about have to fit this description. Characters that always had isolated storylines. It has to be characters other than herself, or else she would have specified that she always dreamed to see Brienne interact with this other person. It's characters that are part of Brienne's storyline, because we know that actors are only ever given scripts for their own characters, so they don't know what else is going on in any of the other storylines that don't involve their presence. Whatever Gwendolyn is talking about here is related to what happens to her. But if Sansa is with her for the whole season, she would know the characters that Sansa would meet as well, so she could definitely be talking about those. It's fairly important characters. I don't think anyone would dream to see, say, Podrick interacting with someone else. Did you know, whatever floats your boat. Assuming that Brienne stays with Sansa for most of, if not the whole season, and sticking to this prediction, we can eliminate a few people. Mostly in the north. The only candidates there would be Melisandre, Davos, and maybe Jon if he comes back early enough. Check this out though. Mel looks like she's leaving Castle Black here. And I haven't heard anyone point out this suspicious green fabric over here. Could it be Sansa's dress? It's definitely a woman's, and I can assure you that you won't find anything green or that pretty at Castle Black. Everything they have is dyed black, so this doesn't belong there. And I really don't think it's part of filming equipment either. It definitely looks like part of a costume. This piece of fabric has been driving me crazy for weeks. But anyways, so maybe she goes to the Riverlands with Sansa, looking for Thoros. Brienne could also be talking about the Brotherhood without banners, or Jaime, or some phrase. All of those support the Sansa equals Lady Stoneheart prediction. Sophie Turner. Sophie has said a lot, so I'm going to pick only the quotes that seem to have the most meaning. Sansa's coming into her own and standing up for herself. This season is about Sansa taking charge and being a leader, rather than just like a pawn in someone else's game. She's really going to thrive this season. In the context of this prediction, going to the Riverlands could be an awesome opportunity to take charge and be a leader by taking on the role of Lady Stoneheart and getting her revenge. This would mean that she's not a pawn in someone else's game anymore. She could also be coming into her own and be the one to make the necessary decisions to make a big event happen, or to get things rolling for that event to happen. What if she asks Brienne to prove her loyalty by killing Jamie? Like Chris mentioned in our predictions video, but what if Jamie talks his way out of it by telling them that if they let him live, he will help Sansa get her revenge on the phrase? And that's how the second Red Wedding happens. These are some random ideas I was discussing with Ertach and his friend Calvin. This quote could also support those ideas. The past five seasons have kind of been everyone spreading out and going their separate ways, and it's very sparse. 
and season 6 feels like everything's kind of coming together. People are forming alliances with other characters and everyone's kind of coming towards the same goal. Coming towards the same revenge goal? When she says everyone's been spreading out and going their separate ways, the first thing that anyone would think of is the Starks. That is the main family in Game of Thrones that has been spread out all over Westeros for the past five seasons. So this could definitely be the season when they finally start getting back together. And we've heard all those rumors about Rickon, Sansa and Jon together in the north, plus even rumors of Benjen coming back. I did say I'd be unbiased about this, so I have to admit it kind of makes it sound like Sansa is staying in the north. But we also know that Arya will be coming back to Westeros as well, near the end of the season, and news from the set say that she will head to the Riverlands. So, Sophie could be referring to Sansa meeting her sister in the Riverlands, which could also just mean running into Nymeria for all we know. Forming alliances could also mean all of the alliances going on in the north for that big battle. But could it also be an alliance with Jaime, the Outlaws and the Tullys? All in all, this statement could really go both ways. But this one. This one is the best. Can we expect more shocks out of your storyline? I mean, are we going to have Red Wedding style shocks in store for us when we watch this new season? Yes. Yes. Yes, you Red are. Red Wedding. Because uh, Red Wedding, I mean, that, that's a big it moment in the series. It was a we big will moment. see shocks as big as that in the season coming up. I mean, Game of Thrones never disappoints. <laughs> uh, I think there are huge shocks this season. This, in my opinion, and I say it every season, but I actually mean it this time, is it's the best season yet. And it's, it's really going to blow people's minds. And fans are going to be very happy with this season as well. For her to be so sure that fans are going to be very happy this season can only mean that we will get something we've been waiting to get for a long time. And I can only think of three things. The Starks getting back together, revenge for the Starks, or Jon's resurrection. But in the same sentence she talks about a huge shock, so we can eliminate the Starks getting back together. That would make us happy, but I wouldn't call it a shocking scene, at least not in the same category as the Red Wedding. Jon Snow's resurrection also doesn't sound like something you could compare to the Red Wedding. They feel like two very different types of shock. And I think Sophie would have mentioned something about that difference, instead of just saying yes to the shock referring to the Red Wedding. Because that's what the interviewer was clearly asking her about, specifically. He repeated it a few times. Red Wedding. Red Wedding. And she kept saying yes. I think this could only mean a shocking scene where lots of people die. AKA, revenge for the Starks orchestrated by Sansa. But she does say there are huge shocks this season, so it won't just be one. Maybe it will be all three of those after all. And like I said before, characters don't know anything beyond their own storylines, so these shocks will happen around Sansa. Here's another random thought. Could this be related to a Frey Pie type of deal? There's rumors that Warman Manderly was cast, so yeah. We shall see. Our final quote is from Dan Wise. Sophie really delivers this season. She's an extremely phenomenal actor, and this year she gets to go to places she's never gone. Is he talking about metaphorical places? Like her character development? Her state of mind? Her position in the Game of Thrones? You know how when someone turns out to be succeeding in life, people tend to say they're going places? So is that it? Or could he be talking about literal geographical places? If she's only going from house to house in the north, that could be considered just one place. <laughs> the North. I think that if going places she's never gone is something big enough to be the one thing you mention in an interview, then it may mean more than just different houses in the North. Maybe he means Castle Black. Or maybe he means the Riverlands. This would match his statement better than any of the other options. Evidence number five. Promotional material. Yes, yes, I know this may not mean anything, and you will probably say that I'm overanalyzing here, but it's worth mentioning just in case. If Sansa's storyline is all about the North, wouldn't it make more sense to have the background of this picture be a bit more cold looking? Have a bit more snow in it? Sansa was included in the same pictures as Brienne and Arya, who we know have a relation to the Riverlands this season. Does this mean Sansa is involved in that too? You may be thinking, well, there was this other picture where they put Daenerys with Cersei and Marjorie, who are in King's Landing, and then it has nothing to do with King's Landing. Are you sure? Are you all that sure that this is not the season when Danny finally heads to Westeros? If she does, 
No matter where she lands, her main objective will be King's Landing. So she can take back the Iron Throne, you know, that thing that she wants really bad. And like I've said before, we know Arya is coming back to Westeros too and will be heading to the Riverlands. Maybe because of Nymeria, so it's not that much of a stretch to think that this is the same thing for Danny. When you look at the individual pictures though, the backgrounds become a bit different and a bit more specific for each of the characters. For example, Arya's background has a bit of a Bravos feel to it. Marjorie's has a bit of a King's Landing feel to it. Brienne's has a River Run feel to it with the castle walls behind her. And Sansa's looks like a forest in the south, like maybe the King's Road. There's also this one where she's... Wait, what? Is that what I think it is? Is that a tombstone? Will Sansa meet the Grave Digger? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. It's not impossible, but I know this isn't enough proof. What is against this prediction? A lot of the quotes do still match a storyline for Sansa in the North. We know that the North will have a huge story this season because of how many casting calls there were for Northern Lords. Reliable sources have confirmed that Sophie was spotted filming scenes in the courtyard of Winterfell. Reliable sources have also confirmed that Sophie was spotted filming scenes alongside the Battle of the Six Armies at Sainfield. The shot we got from her in the trailer looks to be somewhere in the north, because she's wearing a very thick pelt around her shoulders, which means that she's in a cold place. The picture of her in front of a warmer looking forest could be purely promotional and have no hidden meaning. Brienne could be going to the Riverlands alone in search for Arya. Maybe Brienne agrees to go on her own because Sansa is already safe with Northerners who are loyal to the Starks, and now she has to go searching for her sister since she promised to protect both of them. Maybe she's offering her services to the Tullys because the Stark girls will trust her more that way. Sansa was able to marry Ramsay because her marriage with Tyrion hadn't been consummated. But her marriage with Ramsay was definitely consummated, even if it was in the worst way possible. If Sansa was to be the bride of this second red wedding, could they really lie to the phrase about the consummation? Would they trust Sansa? And it's also not easy to find a reason for Sansa to leave the North. I'm not a screenwriter, so I can't really come up with a good plot where Sansa finds a reason to go south. But it's not impossible at all. Look at the guy Locke in the show, for example. Would you have believed me if when we first met him in the Riverlands I had told you that he was going to end up dying way beyond the wall at the hands of Hodor with Bran inside of him? Probably not. So, a screenwriter can make a plot go in many different ways for many different reasons. Three bonus arguments. 1. Think about it this way. What is the purpose for Jaime to go to the Riverlands? In the show, every plot has a purpose. You can trust that him going there to take care of the siege and then go back home would be an extremely boring and useless plotline. There's no conflict there. There's no repercussions. Nothing major is going on. No plot development. They could simply have that happen off screen. If they're showing it to us, then it's because something else will come out of it. Combining the connection that Riverrun has with Sansa, thanks to Brienne, with the fact that this clearly is the Lady Stoneheart plotline from the books, makes me think that the one major result that can come out of this is some good old revenge on the phrase. 2. Can Sansa kill someone? Well, I would consider these two scenes foreshadowing that she might. the purpose of making Sansa marry Ramsay? Was it just to help Theon's storyline? To help him finally snap out of it and escape Winterfell? A character as big as Sansa can't just be wasted for an entire season just for the sake of a small, in comparison, character like Theon. What was the purpose of making Sansa suffer so much if not to make her revenge thirsty? You loved your family. Avenge them. Thank you. 
this is what Ertach's gut feeling is telling him. So if you are right, Ertach, all the credit goes to you, man. You've already nailed stuff before, like the Hall of Faces. And if this doesn't end up happening, well, it's still really fun to think about and discuss. So thank you so much for sharing this prediction with me, Ertach. And I can't wait to see if you got this right. As usual, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. There's some new amazing people in my life that are helping me get closer to doing YouTube full-time. My patrons.